Hello. Welcome to my channel on October 10th, 2022. Today is the day that they're starting to film the movie I was talking about earlier with the role that I didn't get. But still, it's a movie oh, that I helped develop with a character who is loosely based on me. Now the cool thing is this character also happens to be the founder of Fertile Dating. Um, and his philosophy, ideology, is also similar to mine, but he does things that I wouldn't do. He's really feckless and uh, weak. <laughs> I'm not going to spoil the plot or anything, but uh, yeah. In a way, it's good I don't play that role myself, so nobody would confuse me with such a feckless character. Uh, <laughs> plus now, for the rest of October, since I'm not filming those scenes for that movie, I can film my own scenes, such as this one, and put all my effort into that to build my own channel, my own um, video making capabilities. <laughs> How about followers? I have 18 followers so far, so I don't know if I can get anywhere, but I'm trying. So, today, what shall we talk about? I'm just going to take a shower and see what pops into my head. There's nothing popped into my head, and that's okay too. That's still something out of 8 billion people, maybe a couple want to see even that. Who knows? Mm. <laughs> no, I'm not counting on that. Though. Now, this channel is all about my speech, the stories I tell, and we have a clock in this month of October to just create anything, tell my own story, that movie isn't telling my story, it's something I collaborated with. Here I can tell my own story. Um, which right now simply consists of washing my hair. And, uh, I'm a men's rights activist, but I'm not going to talk too much about that because of the fear of getting censored, right? This is not free speech tube, and I already said some things that normies would hate me for. 
so far so good. I am just not the kind of person who could pretend to believe in fake sexual abuse. I don't believe in the metaphysics of fake sexual abuse, like the normies say they do, and some have internalized it. They believe in this uh, religion, which states that certain, or pretty much all, sexuality is abuse because of some metaphysical declaration that some kind of victim is being abused due to some metaphysical reasons uh, like numerology, <laughs> status, uh, all kinds of technicalities that uh, employment status to and, uh, anything for any situation, there's always a feminist taboo it can be used to twist it into criminality. It's not even twisting because it's just the fault by now. Sex is always criminality. Whenever you shine a light on sexuality, you always find criminality. And what's so pathetic is that the normies do not object to this, they simply go along with it and they cover in fear of being seen as a person who does not believe in metaphysical sexual abuse, in the metaphysical badness of sex due to uh, fill in the blank reasons that the feminists can make up as they go along. They can always find a reason to tell you that anything that they can label as anything to do with sexuality is always abuse and always criminal. That's the world we're living in, and the normies are so pathetic, so weak. So easy to brainwash, so afraid of their reputations. But they couldn't possibly say that we don't agree that this is abuse, no matter what that so called abuse refers to. Doesn't matter. It's always, always defined as abuse and never opposed by anyone who will show his face in the mainstream. If you're the kind of person who shows your face in the mainstream, except me, then you're probably too weak to oppose any of this. But the exceptions to that are so few you can count them on one hand in the entire world. And one of them recently died, which is Nathan Larson. All my peers. The activists who can be uh, compared to me, they usually end up in prison or dead or retired. Like they just, like Tom Grauer, for example. He just uh, dropped out of activism because he couldn't take the heat. So that's the, th the outcome for any activist. If he's a really principal, he ends up in prison or killed. And if he's less principal, he retires from activism. And there are also some in the middle who do activism anonymously. But those who actually put their face and name on this, like I do, how many are there? How many are still alive? I can think about uh, like three people. How many are outside of prison? Two people. <laughs> so that's the odds I'm facing of what I'm doing. But it's also partly because 
all you have to do is show up like I'm doing now. It's not that hard. You know, you're carrying around these monsters inside of you. Like that Ithaca poem by Kavafti, right? Carry along these monsters inside your soul. Those are limiting beliefs that make you too afraid to, uh, <laughs> to speak. To speak publicly. But those monsters can't actually hurt you outside of the actual thoughts, right? Maybe some crazy vigilantes that you can defend yourself against. And the cops, they don't have the resources to attack everyone all the time, right? So, you, if you want to be an activist, you can. You probably can without too bad consequences most of the time. Even though like 50% of us who actually do it end up in prison or dead, um, a boat. Within a few years. Doesn't mean it actually needs to be this hard. Because the more men speak out, you're a sexually egocentric man, but you're simply honest about their sexuality. The more we do it, the easier it gets. Because those monsters can really only hurt us by our collective consent. And even individually. It has a lot to do with limiting beliefs, right? You are a lot more likely to be limited to by your own beliefs than by actual police violence, right? So much so that activists are more likely to be imprisoned for activism itself, like I have been at Nathan Larson was, civil disobedience, than for breaking the sex laws that we are activists against, right? So we do this largely willingly. We put ourselves in danger because we are idealists. We are morally convicted. Our moral convictions are so strong that we take these risks. So I wish more men would not be so afraid to say what you believe in. Say it. Say you don't believe in fake sexual abuse. Have the courage to disagree with feminist definitions of sexual abuse. It's not that hard. You can do it too. You can do it. If you're watching this and got this far into the video, you probably want to do it. But you're too afraid. I'm to tell you that you have nothing to fear but fear itself. Fear itself is holding you back. That's 99% of it. The police violence that we are so disturbed by is mostly directed against a political man, right? Men who simply don't have this moral conviction, they just live their lives. As is perfectly sensible, of course, because they're, it is just normal small of sexuality, which is criminalized. So they just go about their lives and then they get in prison and their lives are destroyed. Just for being men. But for being activists, on top of that, it's not really that much of a relief. I mean, 
<laughs> we can do it. I mean, it doesn't make it that much more likely that your life will be destroyed because they want to destroy your life anyway. You might as well be an activist too. Please. We need more male sexualists. 